Hi everyone! Welcome to Live Interactive English. This is Karen. Welcome everybody. I am Shane. Today we're looking at part one of Winter Magic in Strasbourg, and the vocabulary words are hug, hug. The walking path hugs the river for several miles. Cast, cast. The tall tree cast a large shadow over the house. Float. Float. The dancer floated across the stage. Historic. Historic. The historic building has been turned into a museum. Wander. Wander. Claire wandered around the outdoor markets. So we're talking about this really interesting place, Strasbourg. That's right. Where is Strasbourg? It's right on the border of Germany and France. Oh, really? Which is really cool because if you go there, you can see a little bit of French culture、mm -hmm. and a little bit of German, German culture. culture. Really, so I remember I read in the article that there is actually a beautiful cathedral that you can visit,、Ooh. and that's I think over a thousand years old. Wow! Yeah. If you go there during Christmas time,、um, I think what will be really cool is you can see the little houses, and、uh -huh. they look like. Gingerbread houses. No way. Yeah, so I think that'd be really cute to see, especially if there's snow or something、Aww. like that. It's、Ooh. like you're in a winter wonderland. Have you been to Germany or France before? I have been to France when I was little, but I was very young.、Ah, I've、mm. been to both places, but、mm. I have not been to Strasbourg. But I guess it's time for us to check it out. Okay, well, let's learn more about Strasbourg. All right. Enjoy. Enjoy. Winter magic in Strasbourg. Hugging the border between France and Germany, the French city of Strasbourg blends the cultures of both countries to produce a special atmosphere. This makes the city a fun vacation spot, especially in winter when Christmas cheer fills the air. Welcome to Live Interactive English Magazine. Today's lesson is called Winter Magic in Strasbourg, Part One. Hi everyone. My name is Jeff, and I'm Mike. Yes, we are visiting Strasbourg, which, despite the sort of German-sounding name, is actually a city in France. But the name does make sense when you look at a map, because you'll notice that Strasbourg is right on the border of France and Germany. And I believe over the years through history. This city has actually changed countries a few、mm -hmm. different times. You know, after wars and different politics and things happen. But for the last few years, at least the last hundred years or so, Strasbourg has been part of France. And since it's Christmas time, that's an extra special reason to visit this beautiful city. And we'll find out all about it in our article. Let's start reading then. Hugging the border between France and Germany. The French city of Strasbourg blends the cultures of both countries to produce a special atmosphere. So here we've got this verb "hug" to talk about, but I don't get the feeling that we're going to be embracing anyone、yeah. like that. Or it doesn't mean Strasbourg、yeah. loves Germany and it's giving it a big warm hug.、Oh. It means it's very close to. When you hug someone, of course, your bodies will be close together because your arms aren't that long. But we also use this verb to hug when we're just talking about sticking to something or being very close to something. If you're in a new city, you and your friends might hug each other together as you're walking through a busy place, so you don't lose your friends. Or if you're in a really crowded place and you have to stand still, you might go over and hug the wall to let people pass as you stand there waiting for something. You stick close to the wall. You stick close to your friend. And as I said, if you look at a map, you'll notice that Strasbourg sticks close to the border of France and Germany. It hugs the border. There you go. For example, the、oh. walking path hugs the river for several miles. There's the river. 
there's the plat, there's the path. They're close together at all times for this several mile stretch. Anyways, moving on. This makes the city a fun vacation spot, especially in winter when Christmas cheer fills the air. Yes, being on the border there means you might have some fun German activities that you could engage in, and then also some fun French activities that you can engage in too. How cool. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。这次要介绍的旅游景点是 Strasbourg， 史特拉斯堡。那这个城市的名字听起来像德文哎，但它却是个法国城市。那在我们了解它的地理位置之后，就不会觉得奇怪了。史特拉斯堡紧邻法德边界，它融合了两国的文化，创造出一种特有的氛围，让这个城市呢成为一个有趣的度假胜地。尤其是在冬天，整个城市都会弥漫着圣诞节的欢乐气息哦。我们先来看单字 hug。Hug， 它是当动词，可以用来指拥抱或者是抱紧。不过呢，它在课文里面是指紧邻、紧紧靠着。至于补充单字 blend，blend， 它当动词表示混合、融合或者是使什么混合。那么 atmosphere。Atmosphere 表示气氛、氛围。刚刚 Jeff 老师提到，史特拉斯堡是个有趣的城市，你可以在那里参与啊，体验到法德两国不同文化的活动。那么老师用到 engage 这个动词 ，engage 它是拼作 e n g a g e， 那这个动词有参与、从事的意思。我们可以用 engage in something 来表达从事什么、参与什么。接华课文中。Winter magic in Strasbourg. One of the city's top sights is the Strasbourg Cathedral. This nearly thousand-year-old church is amazing both inside and out. Outside, its stone carvings rise above the giant front doors. Within is a huge rose window that casts brilliant colors when light from the sun flows through it. If you happen to be there at 12:30 in the afternoon, watch the astronomical clock show the time with statues of the twelve apostles floating before Jesus. Okay, let's start taking our tour of Strasbourg. Now, when you go to Strasbourg, you're going to want to see the cathedral there. Yes, one of the city's top sights is the Strasbourg. Cathedral. By the way, a cathedral is a really big, special church. That's right. That's pretty much it. It's big. It's important. And in this case, it's old.、Mm. Really old. It says this nearly thousand-year-old church is amazing, both inside and out. That's right. The church is nearly a thousand years old. I would say parts of it have been rebuilt、sure. over the years, probably, but there has been a big church in that place for over for almost a thousand years. And of course, the outside as well as the inside will be worth taking your time to enjoy, to look at, to take photographs because it's fantastic. It says outside, its stone carvings rise above the giant front doors. Carvings of saints and angels, maybe a couple of gargoyles up there too. Lots of great carving and artwork. And then once you go inside, it's even more magnificent. Within or inside, within is a huge rose window that casts brilliant colors when light from the sun flows through it. This will be down at the east end of the church. Above the altar, these rose windows are similar to what you would see in Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. A big round window with stained or colored glass, and in the morning, when the sun is rising in the east, it will cast these brilliant colors into the cathedral onto the floor. What a magnificent sight it would be, as long as it's not a cloudy day.、Mm. Now here we've got the verb cast to talk about. Here we're not a fisherman casting a net onto the water or casting a fishing rod or anything like that. Here we're talking about light or the absence of light. Okay, to cast here is to cause light or shadow to appear on some surface. So there you go. Shadow is the lack of light. Okay. 
many things, like big trees in the middle of the day might cast a shadow. But windows can cast light as well, not unlike this huge rose window in the Strasbourg Cathedral. Anyways, for example, the tall tree cast a large shadow over the house. Thank goodness that tall tree is there. It keeps the, the house nice and cool all day long because the shadow is being cast by that tall tree so the sunshine doesn't hit the house and make everything uncomfortably warm. Mm. Anyways, more about this cathedral. If you happen to be there at 12.30 in the afternoon, watch the astronomical clock show the time with statues of the Twelve Apostles floating before Jesus. This sounds like a magic show, but it's actually something that you can see inside the cathedral. The morning light coming through the window would be great, but if you're there just after lunch at 12.30 in the afternoon, you'll see this astronomical clock. It's a clock that basically sort of uses light and the stars and things like that to show the time, to tell us the time. And in this case, it also creates this sort of wonderful vision, this wonderful illusion, statues of the 12 apostles floating before Jesus. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to imagine. We'll just have to go there to see it, but we will see these 12 apostles. The apostles are the followers of Jesus from the Bible, and as the, uh, as the clock hits 1230, it will look like they were floating before Jesus. To float, in this case, is sort of to move gracefully. We can also talk about floating, meaning kind of hanging just in space, in the air. A balloon might float, or a bird might look like it's floating as it just sort of rides the wind. And of course, a boat on the water, or if you even put a piece of wood into the water, it will sit on the top of the water, not moving, just sort of hanging there in space. It's floating. We can also use the word float to talk about moving in a graceful way, like our, in our example sentence. The dancer floated across the stage. Of course, she's not being lifted by the wind, but the way she moves, it looks like she's being lifted by the wind. It's so graceful and effortless. Sounds like a wonderful thing to see. I gotta check out this cathedral, but there's much more to check out in Strasbourg, and we'll find out all about it after the break. 来到史特拉斯堡，这座城市其中一个最有名的景点就是史特拉斯堡主教座堂。那么文中有一个单字cathedral，cathedral它可以用来指大教堂或者是主教座堂。那这间教堂呢，它有将近一千年的历史。它的
。再顺便补充一下 ，Michael 老师有提到 stained glass 表示彩色玻璃，其中这个 stained 是拼作 s t a i n e d。好，那这种彩色玻璃，特别是指那种教堂窗户的那种彩色玻璃。我们接回到课文中。Winter magic in Strasbourg. The historic quarter where the Strasbourg Cathedral is located is also worth checking out. Called Le Petit France, it's considered to be the city's most beautiful. So take the time to wander around it. You'll see pretty lanes, gingerbread-style houses, and other features that will have you feeling as if you're in a fairy tale. Everyone. If you go to Strasbourg, you have to go to the Strasbourg Cathedral. But the place around this cathedral is also pretty cool. Yes, the historic quarter where the Strasbourg Cathedral is located is also worth checking out. Go ahead and explore the area around this cathedral. It won't let you down. It's a super cool place or quarter, and it's also historic as well. Here we have the adjective historic. Historic means of or having to do with history. So this quarter is old, and interesting things have happened there over time or have happened in the past. So for that reason, we call it a historic place or a historic. Order. For example, the historic building has been turned into a museum. Yes, this building used to house the King of France, so it's historic. But now it's been turned into a museum. That's right. This historic quarter, quarter of course, is being used here like the word neighborhood. That's what we're tying this area, this neighborhood. It's got a name. It's so famous and important.、Mm -hmm. Called La Petite France, it's considered to be the city's most beautiful. So take the time to wander around it. Not only is it one of the older quarters in the city, it also is one of the most beautiful. So it really is worth more than just a few minutes. Don't just walk through it to go to the cathedral and then leave right away. No, take the time or take some time to wander around La Petite France. To wander, this verb is basically to walk with no set destination. You're not going from here to there straight away. No, you're just kind of walking around. You're exploring. You're checking things out. You're seeing what's nearby. You're wandering. You're walking, but you don't really have one set goal. You're just kind of seeing what you can find. For example, Claire wandered around. The outdoor market. She didn't have a list of things to buy and only ten minutes to buy them. She had an hour to kill, so she was just checking stuff out. She was just wandering around this market.、There、Good go. for her. Now, one thing: if you're wandering around an unfamiliar city in Europe, let's say, feel free to wander, but be careful. You don't want to get lost. Anyways, more on Le Petit France. There you'll see pretty lanes, gingerbread-style houses, and other features that will have you feeling as if you are in a fairy tale. As if you are in a fairy tale, a real-life fairy tale. Amazing! It would look just like a picture book fairy tale story. From when you were a kid, but it's all real, isn't that fantastic?、Mm. I think Strasbourg is worth checking out, especially at Christmas time. And we'll have much more about this city at Christmas time tomorrow. So please come back and join us for that. 看完史特拉斯堡主教座堂，也别忘了在它周围地区晃一晃哦。这个区域被称为小法国，它具有历史意义，而且呢，被认为是这个城市最美丽的地区。你可以看到漂亮的巷子，然后姜饼屋风格的房子，还有它有一些让人仿佛置身童话故事的特色。好，文中的 fairy tale， fairy tale 就表示童话故事。那么 quarter。Quarter 在这边，它是指城市里的某个部分或是某个区域。那我们最后来看两个单字 ，historic，historic， historic, 它是形容具有历史意义的或是历史性的。那么 wonder，wonder， wonder, 它是当动词，表示漫游、闲逛、漫步。好了，那么以上是这个讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。
大家好，我是 Hanny。在今天的课程中，我们要介绍五个文法重点。第一个是 happen to 加原形动词，第二个是 watch 做感官动词的用法，第三个是 with 加受词加受词补语，第四个是 where 引导关系子句的限定用法，第五个是 be worth 加上名词或动名词。首先。我们来学习 happen to 加原形动词。happen to 加原形动词是指刚好、恰巧、怎么样。例如 ，I happen to know a nice restaurant not far from here。我刚好知道一间不错的餐厅离这里不远。接着，我们来学习 watch 做感官动词的用法。Watch 做感官动词表示观看或是注视，常见的用法是 watch 加上受词加原形动词或者是现在分词。当受词补语是原形动词的时候，是用来描述看到过程或是事实；当受词补语是现在分词的时候，是用来描述看到动作正在进行。例如 ，She watched the children play。她看着小朋友们玩耍。We watched the actor dancing on the stage. 我们看到那位演员正在舞台上跳舞。接着，我们来学习 with 加上受词加受词补语。句型 with 加受词加受词补语是用来表示附带状态或是原因。受词补语可以用介系词片语、形容词、现在分词或者是过去分词。那以分词来当受词补语时，如果受词跟受词补语的关系是主动，就用现在分词；如果受词跟受词补语的关系是被动，就用过去分词。例如 ，Daniel stood by the car with his arms crossed. Daniel 站在车子旁边，双手在胸前交叉。接着，我们来学习 where 引导关系子句的限定用法。Where 做关系副词，可以引导关系子句来修饰表示地点的先行词。如果先行词是非特定不明确的地点时 ，where 的前方不加逗号。那 where 所引导的子句是用来限定先行词的范围。那这就是限定用法。例如 ，The town where they live is famous for its hot springs. 他们住的城镇以温泉闻名。那句中的关系子句 where they live 是用来限定先行词 the town 的范围，用来说明是他们住的那个城镇。最后，我们来学习 be worth 加上名词或动名词。worth 表示值得或是价值 ，be worth 加上名词或动名词是用来表达值得什么什么的，值得做某事的，或是具有什么什么的价值。例如。The novel is worth reading. 这本小说值得一看。The painting is worth five million dollars. 那幅画价值五百万美元。以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽。See you next time. Bye. <音樂>路上偶遇的英文五句必备句。欢迎收看《就爱讲英文》，我是悠悠。Yeah. 有时候我们在路上会碰到好久不见的朋友，真的很凑巧哎。或者是你去假日逛超市，都还看到上司老板，那就真的是对，就是赶快散了哈。这个时候我们来教<笑>教大家呢，有关于路上偶遇的五个实用句型：一 ，What a coincidence； 二 ，What a pleasant surprise。三 ，It's so nice to see you here. 四 ，I bumped into today. 五 ，It's been a while. 首先，不管是纯属巧合，还是命中注定，还是非常倒霉啊！不是，你如果遇到不管喜欢或讨厌的人，你就在路上碰到他，你都可以怎么说呢 ？What a coincidence! What a coincidence! 啊，就是很惊讶这样。What a coincidence! Coincidence 怎么会那么
巧，巧合。Okay, 是不是 ？Coincidence 好，那如果你觉得这是一个很好的巧合，哦、比如说我暗恋他很久，对不对？哦，不要讲。结果我去按摩的时候，欸、他刚好坐在我旁边。哎、欸、，What a nice coincidence！ <笑> what a nice coincidence！ 你可以加个 nice 上去，这样。好，那这个类似的就是、嗯、What a pleasant surprise！ What a pleasant surprise！ What a surprise 的话就是哎、欸，好令人惊讶，跟刚刚那个 coincidence 很类似。<咳> what a surprise！ 怎么会？好巧哦，怎么会这样让我吓到一，让我吓一跳，吓死人，吓死人。对，但是好的吓，好的惊吓就是 pleasant surprise。Pleasant surprise. What is pleasant surprise? 但是如果遇到不喜欢人，你也可以说 pleasant surprise 了。对，就皮笑肉不笑的。<笑> What a pleasant surprise. 好，那还有什么说法呢？ Oh, 你可以说 It's so nice to see you here. 啊，对，很高很高兴，很开心见到你哦，嗯、对,对，很高兴见到你。<笑> It's so nice to see you here. It's so nice to see you here.、Mm-hmm. OK， 那如果偶遇的英文怎么说？偶遇呢，遇就是不小心遇见了、嗯，你可以用 bump into， 撞到，对，字面上就是撞到这样子， into. 对，或者是 run into， run into， bump into， run into， 就是无意中碰见。Okay, 比如说呢 ，I bumped into my ex girlfriend today。那真的是蛮。好的，好的<笑> I bumped into my ex boyfriend today. 哦、oh, 天哪，好。可是如果偶遇的开场白要怎么说呢？说啊，真巧，好久不见。<笑>啊，怎么那么巧？<笑><笑>这个时候就<笑> It's been a while. It's been a while. 这样就好了。对，我们好久没有见了。It's been a while. 但是，<笑>但是有些人可能一辈子都不想见到他，但是你还是要客气的说一下，对不对,对 ？It's been a while. It's been a while. <笑>那我们来看今天的 live action. Yo yo! What a coincidence! God! Wow! What a pleasant surprise! True, it's it's so nice to see you here. Yeah, I'm glad we bumped into each other today. I know it's it's been a while. How are you? I'm good.